Hello. G uh, good morning. My name is Adam Smith, calling from NobelPrize.org, the website of the Nobel Prize in Stockholm. Yes. First of all, congratulations on the award of this year's Nobel Prize. Thank you very much. <laughs> it could hardly have come any quicker. Uh, the announcement was just last year. Uh, yes, no, uh, that's right. It uh, is amazingly quick. Einstein himself probably didn't think that gravitational waves could be recorded, but you have always been a believer, I gather. Well, I have been a believer, but I began, I'm much, much younger than Einstein. <laughs> and uh, by the time I came along, there were lasers, there were massive computers, uh, technology had changed, and our understanding of possible sources of gravitational waves had changed. Neutron stars and black holes, which should be the strongest sources, Einstein had none of that uh, to base his uh, ideas on. So yes, in, in his uh, seminal paper on gravitational waves, he indicated a skepticism that gravitational waves would never be detected. And now they open a new window on the universe. What will we, will we be able to see now that we can detect gravitational waves? I think over the coming decades, we will see enormous numbers of things. Just as electromagnetic astronomy uh, was begun, in essence, at least modern astronomy, by Galileo pointing his telescope in the sky and discovering Jupiter's moons, this is the same thing, but for gravitational waves. This is, gravitational waves are the only other kind of uh, wave besides electromagnetic that propagate across the universe, bringing us information about the universe. So initially we will see not just binary black holes, we'll see neutron stars collide, tear each other apart, we'll see uh, black holes tear neutron stars apart, we will see spinning neutron stars, pulsars. When the space-based LISA mission is operating, hopefully by about 2030, so we will be exploring uh, basically the birth of the universe, the earliest moments of the universe. Uh, and there will be ever so much more, I'm sure, as including huge surprises as, as the years wear on. Mm. Talking of surprises, the, the one that you've just received, how did the news come to you? Well, I think it was not unexpected <laughs> that uh, this opening the gravitational wave window onto the universe was uh, get a Nobel Prize. I was hoping that the prize would go to the Blanco Virgo collaboration, or which made the discovery or to the LIGO laboratory, the scientists of the LIGO laboratory who uh, designed and built and perfected the gravitational wave detectors, uh, and not to Barry Schweiss and me. We live in an era of where some huge discoveries are really the result of giant collaborations with major contributions coming from very large numbers of people. And I hope that in the future, uh, the Nobel Prize Committee finds a way to award the prize to the large collaborations that make this, and not just to uh, the people uh, who uh, it may have been seminal to the beginning of the project, as we were. Mm. That, 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 I guess, is, a, is a, a conversation and a debate that is going to run and run, yes. I feel that I'm, a, I'm an icon for... Uh, the LIGO Virgo collaboration and the LIGO laboratory. And uh, I'm pleased to be that icon and represent what they have achieved. That's nicely said. So, will we be welcoming you to Stockholm in December then? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Good. Once again, congratulations, and we greatly look forward to meeting you in December. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.